Five Nights at Freddy's fan games are everywhere. From small fan projects to massive indie franchises, they made a massive impact on the horror genre. But let's go back to a time which they weren't. 2015, just after the release of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, a small indie game called Five Nights at Candies was released, and now in 2023, it's by far the biggest fan game ever made, spanning over nearly five releases and a lot of questionable merchandise. <clears throat> but since the release of the third Funny Rat game over six years ago, no new games have been released, leaving fans speculating when the infamous Candies 4 would drop. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking a step back and look at this series as a whole, and ultimately, what's happened to Five Nights at Candies? This is Emil Mako, and this is his original character, Candy the Cat. At the time, the FNAF community was obsessed with this guy, someone even making a low effort fan game using his character without permission. And also, yeah, I can't say I didn't expect that. So, to deter people from doing the first thing, he decided to make his own game. So, Five Nights at Candy's 1 was developed in just a span of three months. Now, it was nowhere near the first game of its kind, with the likes of Five Nights at Treasure Island and the, um, the Return to Freddy's. But it was by far the best and blew up due to its incredible visuals for the time and wholly original cast of characters from Candy the Cat, Cindy the Cat, and even a penguin? So, let's get into the actual game. It's 1987, and just fresh off the mysterious closure of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, you've gotten a job at Candy's Burgers and Fries as a security guard in this office. And I'm not gonna lie, it hasn't aged well. This rotation cylinder effect is just in full force, and it's just... Uh, not to mention how the game is 4x3, just making it look so much more squished together. But the polished models to be paired with the amazing colours and theming of the cameras just completely overshadow that. Anyway, throughout your first night, you'll realise that the animatronic mascots do get a bit quirky at night. With Candy and Cindy being active on night one and even reaching your doors. Aside from having to stare into the abyss, it's a actually fatal flaw of Candy's one. It makes it way too easy to know when someone's at the door. You can literally see it while using the cameras. Difficulty is something that the Candy series really struggles with, but more on that later. The next night, the junior manager tells you in a pre-recorded message that but, but the animatronics do have a few minor glitches. Uh... The animatronics sometimes start to walk around on their own. Uh, sometimes in the morning, we find them in the strangest places. <laughs> uh, so you may see them walking around while you're here. Except after that day, uh, the animatronics don't really seem to function properly around adults. Uh, especially not around the staff. Uh, after this really vague phone call, the next couple nights are very similar, with each animatronic slowly becoming more and more alive, hunting you down in this claustrophobic office. This is what the first Five Nights at Candies perfected, the slow difficulty curve of introducing one new character each night, not only keeping the game fresh, but also fair. But on night 5, the junior manager tells you one last thing. Thing. Do not check the storage room. You brush it off and continue to battle through the nights, finally getting your weekly paychecks of three pennies and a dusty copy of the Return to Face 2. But if you look a little closer, there's something far more sinister. Night 6 of Five Nights at Candy's 1 is absolutely perfect. It's the penultimate night of the first game. This time, everyone is after you. And what is that? This is the rat, the main antagonist of the Five Nights at Candy series. There is nothing behind the suits. No eyes, no soul, nothing but a broken, torn apart figure, and you're locked inside the building with it. 
Candy's one is far from flawless, although it's definitely setting up a storyline, because at the end of each night, you get a small snippet of almost lost footage. Wow, I hope that doesn't become its own entire genre. These more act as a safety net for if Emil wanted to make another game, because while in development, he really didn't expect it to blow up. But it did, so like every IP, it's got a sequel, and oh boy did it get a sequel. Five Nights at Candy's 2. This bombshell dropped on the 28th of February 2016, and wow, is it broken. And when I mean broken, I mean Fizzlom, the developer of Five Nights at Freddy's 1, but showed how the entire game is completely beatable without ever checking your office while streaming to thousands of people, including a mill. Wow, okay. In summary, this game is fundamentally flawed, and unless you've got a crippling fear of phones, then you probably wouldn't have a very good time with this. So, it's August 2007, and you're playing as a 17-year-old girl named Marilyn. And guess who lost a bet to her friends and has to spend five nights in an abandoned factory that just happened to be filled with still active animatronics? Yeah, not sure how that happened. Also, can they have just left. What you first notice, aside from the suspiciously long dark hallway, is that there's no fungi, just these walls of text explaining the mechanics, which really does just break the immersion for me. I always really liked the phone calls in FNAF games, the short snippets of banter before they inevitably reach a slow and painful death felt like a reward for completing each night. In summary, it's basically Five Nights at Freddy's 3, but there's more than one animatronic. You use noises to lure these dumb hunks of metal away from you, or prevent them from getting into the vent, and also... But like I said, you never even have to look at the office, so you'd think if you're looking at the cameras the entire game, they'd at least look good. Nope. It's so bland and uninteresting, with pretty much the only difference between each room being the layout. Not only this, but the animatronics themselves are really unpolished looking, with the withered versions feeling really rushed and just straight up uninspired. Oh, and just like Candy's one, the rat makes another appearance on night 6, but this time with a friend, the cat. Aside from this night feeling easier than previous nights due to there being less animatronics to worry about, it almost feels like a final boss to Candy's 2. The rat mostly replaces the penguin who does and the cat also decides, you know, it. it wants to climb into the vents. Otherwise, they're just like normal animatronics, with you having to use the phones. But what I haven't talked about is the really well-made pixel art minigames. After each night, you're presented with an Atari-style minigame playing in the original Candy's location. In summary, these fetch quest-like minigames further expand onto the Candy's universe. These are really helpful to going in-depth on the story, which I won't cover too much in this video, but in the newspaper clippings, we can figure out that on the sixth night, Mary takes advantage of the faulty wiring and power schedule and sets the factory ablaze, burning it to the ground and destroying everything inside. Released on the 3rd of March 2017, uh, Five Nights at Candy's 3 is by far the biggest and probably best game in the series, with incredibly well-made minigames, an awesome OST, and funny Ratman. It takes the setting of Five Nights at Freddy's 4 and makes it f***ing bearable to play. <clears throat> anyway, the game opens with this cutscene. The puppet is telling you that it's all your fault. Candy's 3 really focuses on fleshing out the story. Here's the actual timeline. So, we're playing as a young Mary. She's been having nightmares after what she saw at the Cat and Rat Theatre, and she's trying to remember what happened that traumatic day. This is the Origami Cat. Basically like the phone guy in the first candies. It explains why you're here and how to fight off the monsters before telling you to venture into the dreamscape. A representation of Mary's memories and the main area you need to explore in Candy's 3. Yet, don't explore too far out. In this night, you have to fight off one of the two main animatronics in this game. 
the rat, who appears at one of three entrances where you can flash your light at him to make him go away. Or if you mess up and don't flash your light at him in time, he will enter your bedroom with you having to fight him off as he sporadically moves in a triangle formation until he gets under your bed. Here, you have to look at what side he's on, then look away until you hear. The first time you encounter the rat is nothing short of absolutely terrifying. From the boom sound as you find him watching you at the doors, to the pure panic of him staring you down in your bedroom. Actually though, you might notice a lot about the bedroom. It's really well made, with lots of references to YouTubers like the Bike of 87 and even Pop goes. It's actually really a bit too much though, and very immersion breaking on the first couple of nights. My only issue with night 1 is that there's a lot of downtime where in usual FNAF games you'd be exploring and looking at the cameras, so it gets really boring after a while of doing the same look right, look left, look right, look left over and over. And even the rat isn't that big of a threat after you learn how to overcome him, but to counter that, this is the cat. Introduced in Night's 3, the cat is the second main antagonist of Candy's 3, although he really doesn't feel like it. Hell, you never even seem to see anything other than his head, because his only mechanic is appearing on the very left or very right of your bedroom, where you have to shine your light at him to make him go away. That's it. Although in the game files, there's a ton of animations where he was obviously supposed to do more. Although, it's all animations that the rat already does. So, fighting off these two monsters is basically the core gameplay loop. But after beating it each night, you're met with an incredibly well made pixel art minigame located in the rat and cat theatre. You've gone with your dad since your brother is away on camp, and on night one you get introduced to the rat. Upon talking to him, you're asked to play hide and seek, and once you agree... <laughs> The Night 2 minigame is similar, with you first being introduced to the cat, asking you to play hide and seek. Same with Night 3, but with the puppeteer. And this repeats until Night 5, where Mary discovers the rat surrounded by kids, whom he wants to play hide and seek with. Yet, Mary cannot find a hiding spot, and in a panic, Mary runs back to where the rat was, only to find the cat leaving a previously locked door open. Walking in, she suddenly finds herself trapped, finding Vinny laying on the table. Mary quickly hides in the closet, and watches Rat enter the room. However, the puppeteer follows him in, and an argument between the two breaks out over the rat's actor apparently being drunk in public. In a blind, drunken rage, the rat attempts to choke the puppeteer out, but the puppeteer pushes back, and then... The cat comes in, refusing to help the puppeteer cover up his actions, yet still comforting him, saying it was just an accident. The cat goes to call an ambulance, until... Night 6 in Candy Story is far different than any other night, with it even having an opening cutscene similar to the one we saw at the very beginning of the game. This is Vinny, the second antagonist and the main boss of Candy Story. The secret's out, why did you return here? Vinny blames Mary for the incident, wondering what could have happened if she wasn't there. And here we get the first good look at Vinny and it's nothing short but horrifying. In Night 6, Vinny is essentially the rat, but so much harder to defeat, with a different movement pattern that goes full 360. And it's not at all forgiving, one wrong move, one late timing, and... Oh, and by the way, you can make the game completely free by just putting your flashlight here and waiting. Okay, moving on. After the release of Candy's 3, we got nothing, with the alleged FNAC 4 still in production, but that was until, out of nowhere, on the 4th anniversary of Five Nights at Candy's, the visually best game in the series dropped. This is Five Nights at Candy's Remastered. 
This is everything that made the first game good, but polished even more with the completely revamped visuals that made the game look incredible. Gone was the awful click team cylinder effect with a completely remodeled cast of characters made in blender cycles, and the whole game's code was entirely rewritten, causing the game to run flawlessly. But not only this, the phone calls were also rewritten and revoiced, and in my opinion, they're a lot better. And that's it. Right? Yeah, on the surface level. But if you go into the extras, then go to the rat in the animatronics tab and zoom in on his face. After a few seconds, a hidden screen will appear, saying seven numbers, and then camera 13. After entering this into the custom night, they'll see no one? I guess this is a free completion to the end. Night Null plays out very differently than any other night. There's only one animatronic, Shadow Candy, who will constantly try to teleport into the office. And to the player, we need to find him on the camera to make him fade out and go back to camera 13, kind of like FNAF 3. However, he is not always visible with night vision, so you have to disable it and re-enable it whenever he leaves camera 13 to find him. Although, if you lose him, then he'll be able to appear at your office, giving you a couple seconds to react and shut the doors. But even if you do manage to keep him out, he will literally rob you of your power. Yet, if he does get in, he won't kill you. He'll freeze time until you find the origami cat on the cameras and take 2-8% of your power. When you finally conquer this night, you'll be treated to one of the only Five Nights at Candy's four cheaters we've gotten, showing the design of the new candy. But that reminds me, where is Candy's 4? It's been 6 years since the release of Candy's 3, and 3 years since the release of Candy's 1 Remastered, and still, the promised Five Nights at Candy's 4 is nowhere to be seen. Even with it being a part of the relatively new Fazbear fanverse and the new Candy Plush drop, so, the question you clicked on this video for, what's happened to it? Well, in December of 2017, Emil started working on some ideas he had for a new Candies game, yet he didn't want to announce it in case it got cancelled. But in June 2018, he posted a puzzle, and upon solving it, you were led to this video, confirming that Candies 4 was in the works. It's really started development in around June 2018, when it's being a point-and-click free room game similar to Sister Location, and it sounds incredibly promising because it's going to be graphically better than the remastered first game which already looked incredible. Look at these screenshots from Emil's livestream, it looks amazing. And instead of Rat, Candy will be the main antagonist, with us not even playing as Mary Schmidt since her story was completed. Actually, it will have the largest amount of animatronics and people, so understandably the community was incredibly hyped. But... That was it. That was all the information we had for a while, with the only new teasers being the Candy's Remastered Night 6 easter eggs and the fanverse. When Scott announced the project and that Candy's 4 was going to be one of the main titles, Emil posted a small status update about the game, saying it was still in development but things like real life and university were taking priority, which it should. But it's been 6 years and we're still empty handed. Games like Pop Goes Evergreen, which Emil is actually a programmer for are getting literally weekly devlogs, but for Candies, the last Game Joe update was over a year ago. But that's because actually Emil is working on another project he announced, FNAF Fur, a FNAF world themed game but for Candies. And apparently he's going to finish that before Candies 4, so I'm really hyped for that. But for now, why don't we add it to the shelf and appreciate the absolutely terrifying work that Emil has handcrafted so far. <laughs>